because there are other people in other uh, um, positions that have a higher rank than him. Um, and, and so it's understanding that, you know, when you are who you are, being willing to wait on who your equal is. That's the key, being willing to wait on who your equal is. So no, it can be much greater than just salvation. Chris, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I think it's greater than the basics of salvation. I think that's on the elementary level. You say, I'm saying, okay, we can't just go there. It's about <laughs> always for me spiritual compatibility. Yes. Because if I'm laying on my face before the Lord, I like to fast. I'm daily seeking him. I'm looking to him about for everything in my life, and you're just okay with going to church every other Sunday, <laughs> then to me, we're still unequally yoked. Yes. Because, yes. like I said before, if I'm looking to a man to be a leader, then my spirituality, I'm looking for him to be a spiritual leader. And how are you leading me in the spirit if I have to come home from church and give you notes from the sermon of the church? I wow. So I think spiritual compatibility is really important to being equally yoked beyond just know Jesus is he your Lord and Savior but what's your relationship like like your mom said what is your real relationship like with the Lord because you should see some evidence of that where it matches because it should match your mission and they should complement your call because if they can't complement your call they'll complicate your call Ooh. go ahead Christian go ahead let me say that last line one more time your call, they'll complicate your call. Come on here. I don't need no more complication. <laughs> you can't be playing Xbox and I'm in the next room today. <laughs> What's going on? You and your drawers playing Xbox and I'm in a prayer call before the Lord in the next room calling, praying heaven down. And you walk by talking about get one in for me. No, you didn't even ask to me on your knees. Oh Unequally yo. Oh and there are certain things that you have to discern it because you won't see it till it's too late. Yes. You know, when you're dating somebody and y'all don't live together, you just show them bits and pieces of yourself. So when you when you buy the product, you see everything that it entails. Speaking of that, speaking of that, how how do you speak to the women, Dr. Perdita, um, that are making more? When you talk about you know, being equally yoked and then you get into submission and all of that, what do you say to a woman that is making more money than her husband and more spiritual than her husband? You know, she would then develop a spirit that she feels as though she's the priest of the house. We have that spirit going on today. What do you have to say to that? Well, um... I've experienced that when I first got married, I actually made more than my husband. And of course, um, you know, I did not have the proper guidance. So I acted like I make plenty of money. And you don't make as much as me, and this is what we're gonna do. But when you when you are a boss and he a boss, that causes a big problem. Because he's not gonna allow you to continue that kind of attitude if you wanna have a good marriage. So I had to, of course, step back, allow him to be the man, and allow him to handle what he had to do. And of course, those roles changed, but I had to allow him to be the man of that house. And I had to respect him, and I think that's a real problem today because a lot of times, women get married and you make more, you think, okay, he can't tell me what to do. Well, you don't need to get married. You don't need to get married if he can't tell you nothing. Because that, that's part of respecting him. When you respect a man, then you can get a lot out of him. And he, he will learn to love you more than, you know, even before you got married. I mean, you want your husband to admire you and to love you for who you are, for your strengths, for your virtue. And, and I believe that, you know, as a woman, you are to pray always. And God will give you that balance in your home. He will help you to deal with your husband. Because I'm going to tell you, my husband is strong. And we both strong-willed. Yeah. And so, you know, I had to learn to pull back. And sometimes, even now, he'll say stuff to me. I'll be like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> and even in church, though, you know, he'll be saying stuff across the pulpit, you know, with the mic. I'll be like, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, they, they know I'm very strong-willed, but I just take back. 
Why? Because, you know, I'm going to give him his face. Okay, baby, go, daddy, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's all right. It's all right because I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what God has called me to do, and I know that I run that thing. You understand? So when you do what you got to do, it's all good. Dr. Medea from Rochester, let's give her a hand. I run that thing. Yeah. Well. Okay. I love it. I love her. Um, so, we're talking about bossing as women. You know, and you talked about how as a boss, you had to uh, step back. Tell me the difference between, and everyone can jump in, you know, dumbing down who you are. When does, it be, when does submission become dumbing down who you are? Or is there a difference? There is a difference. There is a difference. You never have to dumb down because you need to stay in your vein of what God has called you to do and who he's called you to be. So because your husband is powerful doesn't mean that you are less powerful. It means that you help him to meet the goals. You work together. And so what I've learned is that just backing down doesn't mean that, you know, I'm less than. It means that I'm going to give him his space because how many know men like to be stroked? Yes. So, you know, you got to stroke the brother if you want to keep on, you know, I live very good. So, you know, I like living good. And I'm not living good just because of him. This is what I tell you. He living good because of me. You understand? Because he married me. That's why God has blessed our life. Well, you know, you're... So don't get with no man because he's making money and you know you just want to hook up with him because you feel like he could give you a good life because you could be with a man and he don't respect you. He does whatever he wants to do and just because he got money means nothing. But you need to be able to come together. You need to be able to step back. Let him take his rightful role. Let him take his rightful role. And there's a lot of times, you know, he may say, um, t say certain things or have certain suggestions that I may not agree with. Sometimes I speak up, sometimes I just go and pray about it. But he always knows where I stand, you, you got me? So I don't just like step back or I ain't gonna say nothing because he the boss, no. The, he knows that I have an opinion and it's very important that you express your opinion and that you work together. Amen. Amen. Great nuggets. What is the role of a woman in a marriage? Anybody can just jump on in. You got 35 years in the game. I'm not even 35, so we're going to listen to you. <laughs> what is the role? The role of a woman in the marriage is to, uh, the Bible says that it's a wise woman that builds her house. And it's a foolish that tears it down. So you have to be organized, building your house, praying for your family. Um, I believe, and when my children were little, my husband helped. But as my children begin to mature, as I begin to mature, as I said earlier, I always had somebody to help me. So my husband does no housework. He does no housework. I have a maid that comes in four to five days a week. Well, why? Because I set it up. Because I set that up. I didn't wait for him to set it up. I set it up. You understand? So whatever happens in my house, I set it up. I also care for my mother-in-law, she's 83 years old. She has two adult daughters that don't take care of her, she lives with me. But I set up everything, how it should go, how it should be managed. I'm not mad because she's living with me, I take good care of her. I make sure that I watch out for her, I have someone that comes in that cares for her. And so you gotta maintain your own house. Now I'm busy, I'm very busy, I speak, I uh, write books. I mean, I got been several, like three or four businesses, but that's all good, but I have to first take care of my house. Amen. I first take care of my home. I make sure my husband good. I make sure that house is a castle, so it stays clean. We ain't having, you know, the mess, because I'm busy and like I'm here this weekend, so guess what? Before I left, I made sure everything was superb. Normally, I'll make some, you know, like cook some things for him before I leave. I didn't have to do that. I got another daughter that said that she was going to take care of him and get his food and all that. You understand? So I do whatever I have to do, and then I do my own stuff, too. Beautiful. Yes, that's very important. Even for the ladies here this weekend that's married, I hope you set it in order. Because, like, I watch my mom. You know, my mom's a preacher, but 
before she got her preaching engagements, when I was growing up, there would be food on that stove. You know, and so it's important that, you know, you're not saving everybody and losing at home. You know, just hikamoshaya and, and all of this other stuff. And then your husband's somewhere angry and don't want to go to church no more because of the, the way that you represented it. You know, we are a representation of what being a Christian is to people that may not be Christian. You know, she said a lot of great things. She said that she has a maid service that she got herself. <laughs> she put it in order. She said it. Back to 31, Proverbs 31. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. What does that mean? When she comes to the marriage, she already got money. Woo! She's got earnings to work with. So she's not all up in his pocket, but she got something in her pocket. All right. And that, that goes back to what Prophet has said early, earlier about being frustrated that when you're single, you don't got to be frustrated. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't have time to be frustrated. You should be working and building uh, uh, brick after brick to get to where you need to be financially to attain the status that you want to attain financially to birth businesses and do everything else because it is not the will of God for you to just be working for somebody forever. I don't believe that getting what they pay you. But I believe that there's enough ideas and innovation for everybody to have something to generate income into their household. I want to say to you, woman, God, you confirm so much because I don't yet have children, but, you know, looking forward very shortly. But one of the things that God dropped in my spirit that I've been doing for the last year is bringing in a maid service and a chef. You understand? Because I know when, when the babies get here, my mama already said she ain't, you know. I always said, Mommy, you gonna help raise? She said, I'll come visit. I said, No, you're gonna raise. So we still arguing about that. But, um, but I just wanna say what a confirmation that is because I think sometimes as women, we think we have to wait until we have children to bring in the chef or the maid. And I don't yet have them. And the chef and the maid is right there. Praise God. I know that's the truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the right. Because sometimes yes. I don't feel like, but, and I say this because delegation, delegation, I just did a business call the other day. What allows me to do what I do on the level that I do it is delegation. I don't try to do everything. There are some days I will call Uber and my Mercedes runs just fine because I can sit in the back seat and do my work plans while Uber drives or whoever is driving. You understand? So understanding the power of delegation, when you look at the wealthy women in the Bible, even uh, Sarah had a maid servant. You understand? So it's okay to operate uh, under the grace of delegation. I love what you said about uh, running the home. I believe the wife is the heart of the home while the husband is the head of the home. So if we look at our anatomy, everything is reliant on the heart. So if I'm not where I need to be as the heart of the home, my husband is not going to be going to be where he needs to be as the head of the home. Blood from falls from the heart first, right? So it's really up to me to make sure the home is in order. It ultimately all starts or ends with me. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I just wanted to add this. That was nice. um, be careful with who you let in your home, though. Oh, oh, oh preach. Come on, Lisa. Lisa. Ma'am. You better preach. You can't just let anybody, hey. any woman, come and clean up. You better preach. No French maid. And I, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm no joking, y'all. My daughters, I have three adult daughters, and uh, you know, during the time they were growing up, periodically, one of their friends may have had to come and live with us. So this is my rule. Don't nobody show nothing but me. You don't walk around my house, honey, with, with your breasts hanging out, you understand? I'm the only one that do that. I ain't mad at you because you got a cute shape, but this, I'm the woman of this house, you understand? So you have to set those boundaries to protect your household. Don't just bring, even with your kids, don't just bring anybody to take care of your kids. And if you take your kids out, I've seen where the babysitter tries to seduce the husband. So no, you, we're not playing that. You need to keep your eyes open. You ain't got to be jealous, because let me tell you, my husband is fine. I'm not jealous and never have been because I handle my own business. But what you have to do is stop being jealous and, and pray and get yourself together so that you are firm in who you are and you know the destiny what God called you to do. You won't have that problem. But you've got to make sure you lay down those rules. You understand? Absolutely. You look good. I'm serious. I just
just want to start. When, when Tiffany said that you've been married for 35, I'm like, God, I'll put her in her 40s. Oh, you look you look good. So sweet. Thank you. No, I mean, I'm not just saying Thank that, the, you. you know, you look good. And, and I just believe that this is what a godly woman looks like. And Lord, may I receive that anointing. That's good. After I've been married for 35 years, you look good, girl. <laughs> I love her. I love her spirit. I love all these ladies. Well, I'm going to I love her. Yeah. She, she, she's, she's seeking God. Yeah. She's seeking God. She's a seasoned sheep woman of God. Yes. You know, it's very important to have that. Um, I was getting ready to say something, Lord. What was I getting ready to say? I was getting ready to say something to what she was saying. Oh, about having people in your house. You know, it's very, very important. You know, and it all, it all, all of this goes back to what Christy talked about, discernment. Because you know before they even get in your circle what kind of spirit they're carrying. When you have discernment, yeah. you know, you'll be you'll be conversing with them and, and talking to them and the Lord will be like, nope. Mm -mm. I remember when I was young, my mom used to be like, she's sweet, but I don't like her spirit. <laughs> That's called discernment. You can't hang her no more. You gotta be able to discern, especially busy women of God that are going you know, you're just so happy for help sometimes when you have a lot on your plate. But all help ain't good help. Sure. All help is not good help. You have to set boundaries and you have to protect your house. Yes. Yes. It's very important. You're not only protecting the gospel and all of these other different things and snatching people out of the out of uh, sin and all this other stuff uh, and doing whatever you're doing. But you have to protect what God gave you. God assigned you to that man. Yes, yes, say that. That's your first assignment. That's he assigned it. you to that. Stay man. right there. And if you're failing that assignment, but passing all these it's other assignments, assignment. something wrong. It's an assignment. And you need to seek God again. Well, what did you really, did you really tell me to go there and do that and, and you know, be doing all of this? You know, if, if, if me and my husband ain't eye to eye. Or me and the person that I'm getting ready to marry ain't not I because it don't it don't start with marriage it begins in in the relationship you know it, it when you when you get married of course there's a certain you know level of submission that but it doesn't begin when you say I do you know when you're in a relationship and you're building and developing you know you're you're learning submission right there and how to how to say say stay in your place and you know if they if they say no and all of that other stuff because if you gotta struggle with it now you just you just need to wait Absolutely. you know and the root of that is that spirit that can't nobody tell you nothing right. you know sometimes it's not just occurring with the person that you're with but that's something that you've had a struggle you've had in your life for a while an issue with authority because really that's that's authority your husband that God has you with your head is an authority figure. So when you're constantly in struggle with them, that's something that the root of that goes way beyond him mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with. Can I say something really quick? Uh -huh. um, when you were talking about being careful about who you let in your house, um, something that God instantly dropped in my spirit was a series I did a couple weeks ago. And it was the story of Cain and Abel. Um, and when you go back and you read that story carefully, it talks about how in the course of time, Cain became jealous of Abel. Cain was not always jealous of Abel, but in the course of time, the Bible is clear, after Cain realized how favored Abel was, then he was willing to kill his own brother. When you go to Genesis 4 and 7, and 4 and 7, God is having a conversation with Cain. So Cain is in the presence of God, but in the very next verse, he's plotting against his brother. So what that story comes to unveil is that there will be people that you were once okay with who are in the presence of God who will still try to kill you. So what you have to do, all right, because the, the, the series that God was breaking down for me is how to stay alive in your favor. I have a problem that Abel is favor, but can't live one chapter in his favor. And God said the reason why people can't stay alive in their favor is because they stop hearing from God. You think because God puts his hand on you that you got it all together and you don't now have to seek him for a word. But see, that's what got Abel killed. Because had he sought God instead of walking away with Cain, because that's what he was used to doing because that was his brother. And instead, beginning to seek God and said, now Lord, should I walk with Cain this time? He would have found out that Cain had it in him to kill him. Woo! So just because she could come to your cookout last year, don't mean she can come out to your cookout this year. She preached. Preach! That's powerful.
powerful right there. That's good right there. She's preaching. One thing that she just said was that he had it in him. In him. That he had it in him. Meaning, when you, when you are in relationship with people, or before you even let somebody into your circle, you need to discern your spirit. What can you do to me in my down time? When I'm at my lowest place, can you kill me? Do you have it in you? Because there are some people that don't got the nerve to kill, but then others do got the nerve to kill. Do you have the nerve to kill me when I'm almost dead? So that's really good. We got to move this along. But I want to ask you one question before I open it up for um, questions from the audience. Have, do you feel, with all of these relationship ministries, you have a relationship ministry, Christy has a relationship ministry, you have um, this, this uh, um, new wave of, of godly relationships, you find it on Instagram and Twitter, and really just encouraging. Do you feel as though the true purpose of marriage is being confused today. Absolutely. I firmly believe, and I push and push this, if you don't know who you are first, you don't know your purpose, what God has called you to do, who you are, you should not be looking to get married. I think people are so hungry for companionship and wholeness, and they look for somebody else, and they don't know who they are, and that's why the true essence of what marriage is, is being misconstrued, is being lost. You know, God joins people together who are whole. It's not me being half of me and you being half of you. I have to know who I am in Christ first. The Bible says the first and greatest commandment is to love God, then love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning, I have to love God first, then love me in order to love you. The order doesn't work backwards. I have to know and have a real working relationship with God, then know what works for me, who I am, in order to know how to work with you and for you. That's good. I'm going to um, open it up to all the women, that same question. When I talk about the purpose of marriage, you know, when you look at uh, online and you, 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 you would think that the purpose of marriage is for someone to come and sweep you off your feet. You know, is that aligning with the biblical purpose of marriage? No, not sweeping you off your feet because you should be too grounded as a woman to get swept off your feet. Now, what you can do is you can court me in a way that it does take me on a cloud nine experience, but I should always stay grounded, especially spiritually grounded. And I definitely believe that there's a difference between a Prince Charming and a King. Because a Prince Charming comes with a lot of smooth words and charm and deception. And charm is deceitful. That's what the Bible says. But a king comes in and he's very matter of fact. I like you and I can see the potential in loving you. And because of who I am, I'm going to marry you. That's a king. Now the king may not come with so much charm. And he may not come with the swag that naturally sweeps you off your feet. But usually when you get sweeped off your feet, your discernment has already been gone. You're, so you're already in it before he's even told you what he really wants from you. So I do think, get swept off your feet in a healthy way, but be too grounded to be swept off your feet. But you, they can do things to make you fall in love, but I think that's when we over-romanticize relationships, and that's a dangerous thing because you're, not, you're looking for a fairy tale, not a real marriage. And when you talk to the real women that are married, they'll let you know, this ain't no fairy tale. Come on, baby. I still feel love, and I still enjoy it, and I still want to be in the relationship, but it's no fairy tale story. So if you're looking for a fairy tale, you're not ready uh, to be married because mm -mm. You, the Prince Charming will give you the fairy tale. And it won't always be with a happily ever after. So you wait for a king, because a king is solid, and when his yes is yes, and when he knows he wants you, he's going to do what it takes to court you and to marry you, and you will see the fruit. Right. I mean, just keep in mind when you talk about biblical principles that, uh, much like the woman of God said, is is not all good days. You know, when you look at the, you know. Sure <laughs> God Come on. calls the church Jesus' bride. Right. And we a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> so can you put up with a mess? See? Are you willing to work? I'm not talking about abuse, but, but everybody has something that's wrong with them. Everybody has an area that they're weak in, that they need help with. Can you walk with them as Come God on. strengthens Come them on. in that area? Yeah. That's what a marriage is. Do you have the capacity to love them while they go through that storm? Yes. Do, uh, uh, and that's what you talk about when you, um, when you referenced earlier. You know, is it just about being equally yoked? But it's also what about your capacity? 
Anytime you get on a plane or a ship, they say, or even the elevator, this, it has the capacity to hold. Now, if you put too much on it, you and the elevator gonna break. And that's how it is in relationship. You have to know your capacity, know what you can walk with, and know what God has graced you to, to walk with. That's good. Let's put our hands together for these women of God. So I want to open up for questions. I know a lot of you have burning questions that you want to ask. Um, so let's do this uh, by, the, by hand raise. And we'll just, we'll just choose you just so everybody's not jumping in. We'll start in the back. Someone bring her a mic. Would we have an extra mic? Y'all, let's give it up for Tiffany for putting together this conference. Aren't you rolling? Isn't this amazing? Amen. So with that, the first thing I want to say is you don't want to scare nobody. Because <laughs> we're women, we know what we want, but you can't be like on the first day. Now, are you ready to get married? I just need to know, what, what's going on with you? Where's your mind? You ready to put a ring on it? Mm -mm. And be like, no, I'm ready to go. But, you know, I think that it's important for you to Definitely, you know, learn a person, learn a person. Before I even jump, because people are so quick to jump to dating. Maybe it's, maybe we're, it's not time for us to, to date, you know, in a romantic way. Maybe right now I need to just discern who you are. You know, maybe I need to just gather information. And as I'm gathering information, I'm asking qualifying questions. You know, so so as we're friends, before we even, because people don't even do that anymore. Nobody even becomes friends anymore. It's just, let's jump straight to dating in a romantic way. Not just collecting data, you know, the word play, you know. You, you are, that's bad after two weeks. Yeah. Come on, let's tell the truth in here. Yeah. Two or three weeks, you telling your girl that's bad. Yeah. And it's, it, it's not. You know, it's not at all. You learn a year later that it was absolutely not bad. You know, so at this point, you know, you have to you have to get information. First of all, before somebody even becomes my friend, I need information. You know, and not just a man, a woman as well. We, you can't hang with me and I don't know nothing about you. I don't just open my space, my private area, my intimate space to people. You need to know who's coming into your space. I don't have many friends. You know, and I get nervous about people who got, who the whole, I told one of my friends, I said, you just got a lot of friends. You friends with kids, you friends with people's grandparents, everybody your friend. You know, you have to be very, very careful because a friend is somebody that you trust. You know, and that you, you, you have confidence in. So you have to be very careful about it. But you, you get to that place with asking qualifying questions and really just figuring out, you know, who they are. So as women, you know, when you are when you are trying to get that type of information from a man, you want to be careful because you'll give them an opportunity to say you're marriage hungry. That's one of the things you hear often, oh, marriage hungry, marriage hungry, marriage hungry, hungry because you ask certain questions. So you really just ask God to grace you with the way to get the information that you want to know from a person without turning them off or giving them the wrong perception of who you are. And Mm -hmm. I want to add to that. Um, you really don't have to initiate or kind of poke at that if he's really being upfront with how he feels with you. 
I didn't have to hint to my fiance, hey, you know, we should be moving along to engagement. That was something that he did, you know? Um, and I get it, it's so hard in our generation, I'm in the same age bracket of you, it's like everybody just wants to talk. I personally didn't produce enough saliva for all that talking, so I stopped talking. I don't want to talk. Are we going to be moving toward <laughs> marriage? Yes, but I'm not asking. I didn't have to ask him, like, hey, you know, you don't, if he's really pursuing marriage, and he, if that's one of his goals, that's what he wants, trust and believe, it'll be clear to you. And if you have to wonder, he's not for you. Woo! If you have to question, does he want to marry me? He does not want to marry me. Come on. He'll let you go. Without you having to ask. Next question, Relinda. I just know because she's one of my mentees. Come on, right there with the jean jacket. It's not working? Okay, Tyrone left. Chrissy, move on. We'll share this way. Tess. <laughs> okay, well, I just want to ask for the it does appear that there's an abundant amount of women that want to get married. So my question is, do you think that they're looking for marriage or they're looking for purpose? Because sometimes you think, you know, you want to be married, and then when you do get married, then you'll try to fix this man, get your fixed man kid, and try to make him into this thing where you can spend all that energy and purpose. So I think sometimes it's confusion because if you're not in purpose, how can you learn to be that, that wife? So what... One more time, the question. Oh, could you think um, that a lot of women, they're not necessarily looking for a husband, they're looking for purpose. Now when you say purpose, you mean? Like they're not in purpose, but then they're just, just so infatuated with getting married, it could be purpose. Okay, anybody can do Well, I think that's where it comes to you know who you are. You need to find your purpose before you start trying to engage with somebody. Because what's gonna happen, and as a lot of us know, you'll get with somebody and it ain't gonna work. And I think you guys have already talked about that. You gotta know who you are. You need to spend time with the Lord in prayer and seeking his face to see what am I supposed to be doing. And then when you go into the marriage, you'll know, you know, you can't go into a marriage like I'm expecting you to make me happy. Because guess what? He ain't going to make you happy like that. You got to make your own self happy. Y'all looking at him. He ain't. He's not going to make you happy. The man is not coming to make you just happy. One day he may be good, next day he's bad. You understand? So then, then what? You're down? Because he ain't acting like he was acting last week. No, you got to have your purpose, your destiny already in you. So no matter what he does, you, are, you know who you are. You know where you're going, and you know what God has called you to do. So you have to really, and I, I think that's the most important thing for us, to know who we are, where we're going, and what God has called us to do. And some that are even married, don't wrap yourself so up into your husband that you don't have a destiny and know what you're supposed to do in life. Because as soon as he lets you down, you messed up. So no, when you know who you are, he can do whatever he want to do. You still gonna know who you are, and you gonna help him. <laughs> That's right. Very important to know who you are. You know, one of the reasons people find themselves in bad relationships is because they got in a relationship because they were unhappy. They were unhappy single, and so sometimes you find yourself linked to people that. If you were in your right mind, you would never even be where you ever look at a relationship and be like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? How did you get in? Gross. <laughs> and it's because, you know, everybody got our gross moment that we don't tell nobody about. <laughs> but the reason they were able to get in is because you were unhappy being by yourself. And because you were unhappy being by yourself, you wanted to find someone that would make you happy. And in the beginning, in the love bombing stage, they did make you happy. But then when you settled into the relationship, they became who they are. Yeah. They started to reveal pieces. They started to take layers off and show you who they are. And then you're no longer happy because one, you weren't happy once you were, um, before you were in the relationship and their behavior is determining your moods. 
A lot of people, that's very dangerous, a lot of people find themselves depressed based on somebody else's behavior. You're not giving me what I need, so now I'm going through this bubble of depression because you're acting a certain way. But like she said, when you're content with who you are and you, you know who you are, behavior does not affect you. I mean, you'll, you'll be upset that they're acting a certain way, but it won't define you. I want to go back to a point that I made when I was talking about emotional management. We don't just need to manage our emotions when we're angry. We need to manage our emotions when we're in love. Yeah. Okay? So what that means is, oh my God, we had a fantastic day. Oh my God, you're jumping off the walls, calling your best girlfriend. That's cool. But 10 minutes after that conversation, I need you to get back in your purpose and finish the book. I need you to get back and start going back and doing your homework. I need you to start working out the business plan. That's how you stay grounded. Nobody is just supposed to come into your life and just wreck your life. Where it, it's just if they walk away, get devastated. If you walk away, give me a year, I will have fully recovered. And not only recovered, but resurrected. And not only resurrected, but upgraded. Keep playing with me. Because you are not my life. You are a part of my life. And that's how you manage your emotions. And I think it's natural to her, her differential, like, is it that we want purpose that we're looking for and we're replacing it with love, but I think it's natural to want a relationship. When Eve was put on the scene, the first thing she was introduced to was relationship. So it's natural, but you can't let the desire rule you, and you've got to work your purpose. Even Ruth, she was in her field when he found her. So you've got to find your field, because what will happen is, if you don't have purpose, then you really don't know who you are qualified to be a helpmate to because you'll end up married with a mission that is mismatched. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know your own purpose because not only are you looking to see who you can be a helpmate to, but who complements my mission? Because I have a purpose here, and if God's giving me this direction, I'm not saying that our visions have to be identical, but they do have to parallel. So if God's leading me all the way over here, and you get to make that come all the way over there, Division is at the forefront of the room, and then divorce will be later. Mm -hmm. the division leads to divorce. Division leads to divorce. <laughs> Prophetess Val and then co pastor Tina. <laughs> okay, first thing, it's not big, I got a question, but I gotta say this God's getting ready to release a talk show. And I just needed to say that because this is needed th throughout the nations. So I heard the Lord say, he's going to go there and talk to the evangelist more than that. Y'all have to believe this, but in the next, I hear God say in the next 24 months, uh, the major network shall know her name. So uh, that's what I'm going to She don't promise out of me because she's my friend, so I'm taking it. <laughs> but this is what I want to say. A lot of times, I think, uh, I have a question and a statement. Um, whoever wants to grab it. This is my statement. I think a lot of times what I find in counseling, women are dating looking for daddy. I think a lot of times they're dating looking for daddy. So they're looking for their man to be what they wanted their dad to be. And so I think that's a lot of times why they have failure. This is my second thing. This is the question. How far, any of you all, do you let your single friend advise you in your marriage. Never. You don't. That's the one. Sorry, I have to grab the mic on that. You don't. They have, a single woman has no business talking into your situation. She has not been anointed to talk in your situation because she has not been graced to walk in the shoes in the situation you're in. So I can't give you advice based on something that I have not experienced. I don't know the struggles attached to it. I have an inkling I have an education, I have a psychology degree, but outside of that, I don't have the experience. So education becomes sometimes null and void when you have experience. It's like education when it comes to God. So they have all of these theories pertaining to God in the books, but once you done had that experience, then I don't care what the books say, I know what I felt, I know what he did, I know what I saw. So, when it comes to, you know, women, and even as you transition into marriage, I believe, and I'm single, I'm not married, but I just, I, I'm led of the spirit. 
in what I'm saying right now. And I, I have parents that have been married for over 30 years that I've watched work through marriage, complete opposites work together. So um, one thing I will say is um, as a single woman, you know, I tell, I tell my friends that are married, you know, I feel this, but it's not, you know, you need to find, you need to find someone older than you that's been married 30, 40, 50 years that have been through the obstacles that you're in right now that can show you because a single woman, especially a single woman with no man, girl, please, would be like, leave that joker. He ain't this. He ain't that. And then you be single together like blind Bartimaeus on the roadside, blind with your friend. No husband. You know, you have to you have to find seasoned women of God. You know, there's certain levels and, and seasons in your life. So, you know, there are single women that like to hear from me, but then there may be married women that are, that are just married that may want to hear from my mama, somebody who's been here sometime, Dr. Perdita, Prophetess Tara, who they're you know from the married women of God that are in a, a that are at a phase that I haven't reached yet. And as women, sometimes we feel like we have to have all the answers. It's okay to say, I don't know. Because I haven't been there yet and I haven't experienced it. Dr. Perdita. Yes, ditto. You do not let any. This is me. You're not going to tell me how to handle this. Because you're not here. You have not experienced it. Just like uh, Evangel said, you haven't experienced this. You don't know what it takes to make this thing work. You understand? So you're going to go through some times where, you know, there's disagreement where a single person may say, girl, I wouldn't deal with that. Well, that's why you're not married to him. You understand what I'm saying? You, you're not going to tell me what to deal with and I'm not even going to share none of my stuff with you because you don't need to know nothing about him. I have um, one person that, that I help and uh, she was, uh, we were just having dinner and she was sharing that, um, how, you know, how they do in the bedroom. I say, excuse me, do you see all these women around here? You talk about what you do in the bedroom and how good he make you feel. No, baby, because guess what? One of these is going to get him. No, you, and then you complain. You cannot allow that information out. It's none of nobody's business. I'm sorry, it's none of nobody's business. What y'all do, how good he do it, and how, you, no. That's right. You know, it's, it's just very, very, very important that you, you keep a line. You know, I was going to say something, but I forgot. You got something. I mean, I was just going to say, even the woman of God said, do you like your single friends? But even, you know, and I, I said this, I told my friends, I said, if you've been married for under 10 years, I, I can't Come take marriage advice from you. Come on. And not that I'm discounting them, but notice what I did earlier. You saw with your own eyes. When Tiffany asked a question, I said, well, I'm going to let the woman of God. She's been married longer than I've been alive. Why would I not seek her wisdom? So it's, it's, it's not just no, your single girlfriends or your single homeboys, but who has been successful and has a track record of success. And also, I just want to say, um, I caught my thought back. You know, as a wife, you're on assignment. You need to understand that man is your assignment. And you can't advise me in my assignment because this is not your assignment. Come on. This is something that God gave me to this person and graced me with the patience, graced me with the strength to deal with this person. So you might not understand why I'm still here because this is not your assignment. And God knows I'm not a quitter when things happen. So you, what you won't put up with, God gave me to this person because he knows that this person has this wrong with him, this wrong with him, this wrong with him, and that wrong with him. And he's graced me with the patience and the wisdom, the wisdom as a woman to deal with him. My mom. This, this is the last thing, I promise. And, and I promise, I'm newly married, got married December the 7th, praise God. <laughs> Thank you so much, my baby. Uh, but this is something that uh, my mother told me. She's been married for 46 years. And in 46 years, I've never seen her and my father fight. Um, this is something she told me. She said, Valerie, don't go into the marriage broken. You can't go into the marriage broken because the woman is the rib. You came from the rib of the man. The rib protects the heart. If the rib is broken, you expose the heart. Beautiful, beautiful. I've heard a lot said, and I think it's just some wonderful information. 
Um, I wanted to piggyback off what my daughter, I guess that's because me and her, she has my daughter, I'm her mother. And I want to just piggyback off what she said. She said the key word, assignment. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Now I'm going to die. Now let me just say this. First of all, marriage is holy. Yes. yes. Don't ever forget it. Yes. It's not just about two people coming together to spend the rest of your life together. That's the first point you must know in those of us that are seeking mates. Marriage is holy. It is holy, meaning it comes from God. In the beginning, God created. He created male, he created female. And I think some of the problem is we don't stick with the word enough. We have all of these, and I, we have some wonderful theology. But I'm from the old school. <laughs> is there anybody else in here beside me that's from the old school? I'm from the old school. I met my husband. Now, everybody don't have this story. I met him when I was 15 years old. I didn't start dating him at 15, but I met him when I was, at 15, when I was 15 years old. I got married at 19. 19 years old. This year, I will be married 34 years to the same man. Amen. Now that's not everybody's story right. But it was mine Amen. It's what God had willed For my life And that's why even with you know the panels and everything I want you to make sure That you follow God's path Even as I talked about destiny What he has for your life Because when God has given you Your mate as an assignment No one can fulfill that assignment But you he does give you the grace to handle that man because purpose sometimes is, is one, it's two people, but it's one purpose. He said the two becoming one. That's another point. And then my last point or the last statement that I want to make, marriage is not about perfection. Can I help you? It can't be about perfection because there's two imperfect people. Sometimes I think, you know, we get married, we expect this, we expect that, and that's nice, but every day is not sunny. You're going to have a whole lot of rainy days. Is there anybody else in here that's married beside me? Thank you. You're going to have a whole lot of rainy days, and if you don't know that God called you to that man, you will get a divorce. But you won't please God because you would have failed in your assignment. So what are you saying, uh, uh, Mama Tina? I'm saying you got to wait on God. You got to pray, but you got to trust God because marriage is holy and it comes from God. Thank you. Amen. Let's put our hands together for all of these women. Yeah. Dr. Petita will be the, the last and then this young lady, we, we got five minutes for overtime. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> marriage is not just get married, everything's wonderful. He's always going to be so sweet. Mm -hmm. He's going to be so nice. When he get ugly, is you still going to be able to deal with that? Come on. Because we are both imperfect. imperfect. So I have my ways, he has his ways. Yep. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to deal with your husband. Yes. And don't just, I've seen it so many times, especially young women. <laughs> you get married, well I shouldn't say only young, old too. Get married and you think it's perfect and because he don't act right or he don't uh -huh. do the right thing. You talk about I'm out. See? No, you not you out. Why? Because things didn't work out like you wanted. He ain't doing exact. He not doing what you told him to do. Come on, so you here. out? He ain't gonna. Let me tell you something. He ain't gonna do what you tell him to do. He sure ain't. Okay. <laughs> he gonna do what he wanna do when he get ready. So when you say, could you do this? And he say, no, I'm do when I get ready. So you mad? Deal with it. Do you understand? That's you it. just learn how to um, how to really just flow with your husband. Like, I understand my husband, you know, he told me the other day, he says, um, you just like bossing me around. I ain't trying to boss you around. Whatever you want to do, baby, I'm with you. Whenever you get ready to do it, you can do it. But I know that, you know, he's going to eventually do it. And so you just have to understand that it's not perfect. And he's not always going to talk to you like you want him to. That's right. He's not always going to stroke your ego. Oh, you're so pretty. He might not tell you you look good <laughs> for a month or two. Might, it might be a whole year. You know what I'm saying? Come but that's on. where you got to build yourself up. Right. Know who you are. Know your and take care of yourself. 
I think somebody talked about that earlier. You got to take care of yourself. Don't just because you're married and in church, don't, oh, hey, he need to just deal with it like he is. No, he don't. He don't have to deal with you just like you are. You need to take care of yourself like you did when you was trying to get him. You fixed yourself up. You made yourself up. You did your hair. You wasn't looking all toe up from the floor up. You tried to look good every time you seen the man. And then you get married to him and you think that you can look any kind of way. You can't. Let me tell y'all something. I will wear lipstick to bed. Do you understand? My I'm going to put my lipstick on. I don't Wait, no. Because I like my lips to be moist. Do you understand? So I'm gonna put and I will put earrings on. My granddaughter said, Grandma, why you got lipstick in here? Because I'm looking cute. And you got all this hair. Hold on. All this hair. You understand? I get hair that I could just keep, you know, keep it just like this. When he go to sleep, I put it in a ponytail. I'm not tying it up. I ain't tying nothing up, you understand? Because as soon as I get up, I'm going to pull that ponytail holder out, honey, and shake it just like this, you understand? I try to take care of myself. No, so, you know, don't only, don't expect that, that you can look any kind of way. Take care of yourself. Take care of your spiritual self as well. Not only the outer, because, you know, it's good to look cute on the outside, but what's inside of you? That's it. What you got in there? Are you praying? Are you seeking God? Yeah. And that's what's going to, I'm going to tell you, that's what's going to help you to deal with your husband. That's it. You pray. When he's ugly, listen, when my husband acts ugly, normally I know what his problem is. I automatically know what his problem is. Why? Because I done pray. I done been praying. I know what, what he's dealing with. So guess what? I'll just let him know, hey, it's going to be all right. We're going to work through this. I'm all right. So that's what you have to do. I just, I mean, I, you just that's really beautiful. spark something that's beautiful. in me because it's, you know, I just find so many times the young women, especially young, um, they feel like I'm not dealing with this. You need, you gonna deal with something. That's it. He's not perfect. You not Come perfect. On. I don't care who he is, what his title is, and how much money he make. Nothing's perfect. That's right. And you're gonna have to work through it in order for for your life to be great. And I want to tell you, I got married. I was 18. My husband was 21, <laughs> and we have grown together. So you have to grow together. That's it. That's you know, it. we've grown together. We have we've accomplished great things in our lives. Yes, together. Why? Because we work together. I That's I it. stepped down when I needed to. When I need to back up, I kept my mouth shut. Come see, on here. Talk. Y'all see how I'm talking about? <laughs> I can talk. Okay? So guess what? I had to shut that mouth. Uh -huh. I had to shut my mouth uh -huh. and allow him to, you know, be the man that he needed to be. And I prayed. God, help me to deal with him. Yes. Help me to keep my mouth shut. Yep. And yep. help me to allow this thing to work itself out. Beautiful. And so that's what you have to do. You got to back down and let God work it out for your life. Beautiful. I want to say something very quickly. Um, just to piggyback off your last point you said, you know, about not talking so much. You can be quiet when you trust him. Yeah. So it's making sure that you marry somebody that you trust. That's but it. the further point I really wanted to make is my degrees are in media. My certifications are in media. I can talk to you about media psychology all day long because I understand the psychology that goes into shows when they're put on the air. So a lot of times when you sit down and you're thinking, oh, I'm just watching X, Y, and Z, it's harmless. No, it's not. There are producers, there are writers, there are thought processes that went into the characters of that show, etc. What am I saying? A lot of our relationships are dysfunctional because of what we're watching on TV. Woo! You see, my generation, we grew up on the Cosby show. That's why everybody in my generation wanted to go to an HBCU because Cosby, every single week he had on a sweatshirt that had an HBCU on it. Where did his kids go? They went to a fictional HBCU called Hillman. What you see will influence you. So the reason why some of these relationships are the way that they are, because you're watching Kiki in the relationship on TV, not understanding that she got a million dollar paycheck that she's going on to. Be careful. Guard your eye gate and your ear gate. You don't want what's on TV. You want reality. That's because it. I can tell you because of the industry that I work in, all right, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it alone, all right? Reality TV ain't reality. Sure ain't. I don't believe it is either. It's too much. Now talk about experience and education and what I have experience in. It ain't always reality. Some of the people are returning them Bentleys when the cameras turn off. Uh-oh. Some of the people are renting matches that you think that they own. Wow. 
And some of the people are living separately that you think are really working together. Wow. So make sure you're getting your ideology of what a relationship looks like from the word of God and not what you're watching on television. Amen. Awesome. Last question. So I have a question that uh, I'm a young woman and this topic is very um, prevalent. Um, so my question is, what is your take or your advice um, when you face uh, the topic sex, sex before marriage? And um, because I've heard, you know, I've heard of couples that had sex before marriage and they have, you know, 10 year, 30 year, 40 year marriage going on. So I wanted to know what's your advice for a young woman as myself um, on sex before marriage? What you mean? <laughs> sex before marriage? Yeah. What's your take on it? What's your um, advice for young women who, who, you know, always hear about sex before marriage and it's something that's always talked about amongst young people? Okay. Now, is she saved? Because you just don't do it if you say it. Like, what, is it for you or is it for... I mean, no, are you just a topic. Just a topic for, yeah. I'm saying, because Christian women, if you if you have a relationship with God and you know the word of God, you know that fornication is a sin, so you should be having sex with yeah. women. Yeah. So that's one. It's just no. It, it's just no. There's, I mean... Say you know, no. <laughs> the real deal is this. It's confusing because people are having sex before yeah. marriage. Come on. That's just the real deal. We have real talk. People are having sex before marriage. And I was talking to one of my mentees who, um, you know, was going through her walk with God and really living strong. And she had sex with someone and she fell into condemnation. Now, if you find yourself falling, you cannot fall into condemnation because that is a trick of the enemy to keep you outside of the presence of God and outside of relationship and communication with God. If you find, because it's unrealistic to say that you won't find, it, it might not be sex, but whatever it is, it's unrealistic to say that you won't find yourself at one point in your life messing up and having a fall. I think that's what's damaged the church because people are not real about this thing. To be real is that you are going to find yourself in struggles and find yourself in dilemmas. And sometimes you will pass the test. And, you know, if you're not prayed up, you will fail that test. Yes, you will. You know, but you, the first thing with not having sex before marriage is you need to put yourself, you have to stop putting yourself, yourself in situations to have sex before marriage. Exactly. So there's usually a lead up. Uh-huh. Before the hookup. <laughs> You know, there's a lead up to it. So we done had some taxes, you know, we done, you know, we done, we done created a, we done bought some hotel keys. We done, we done spent money because sin is costly, honey. Yes, the Bible says that Jonah bought a ticket to Tarshish. He had to buy, it wasn't free. It cost him something, you know, and it's always going, sin is always going to cost you something. So it's, a, it's more costly for you to um, be disobedient and operate in sin than it is you know, for you to be obedient to God. So it's, it's important that you really just keep yourself out of situations. If you know that that's your struggle, um, to keep yourself out of situations where you can maintain the promises that you've made to God, that you can keep those promises, and that every year it's not, if you do this, I'll do that. You know, especially surrounding sex before marriage. And this is the last comment because we have to stop. I want to add to what uh, the evangelist said. Just because you see people and they're out having sex doesn't mean you have to do it. They could be together for 20, 30, 40 years and their marriage still not be right. There's a reason why God says do not do it before marriage. You don't want to introduce or bring something into your marriage that doesn't need to be there by being disobedient. And there's a reason why God tells us not to do it before marriage. So just keep that in mind. Like There's a reason why God says what he says in his word. That's right. We have to obey the Bible, period. I know that there are all, like my mom said, all these theologies and stuff, but if you can't find it in the word of God, you're out of order. That's it. You're out of order. Your life has to be patterned by the word of God. That is the final authority. All of these wonderful, you know, life coaching and all of that stuff, if it's not grounded, found in God, then it's, it's not applicable to your Christian lifestyle. That's it. You know, even when she was talking about, you know, running your mouth, you know, you have to have a meek and quiet spirit. That's the word. You know, so it has to be found in the Bible. Christy, and then we're out of here.
Just realize that the sex before marriage will distort your discernment. And so you'll start making decisions because of how you feel in your flesh. And present fleshly feelings can still lead to a torturous future. So go into it knowing that sex is a spiritual thing. That's it. And so when you're having that intimacy with someone who you're not in covenant with, the remnant of that is going to either affect the current relationship or can cause problems in the future relationship, even if you did get married. So the goal is to always strive to be on the standard of God's will, regardless of what's popular. If it's not right, popularity doesn't take over the principles of God. Yes. Exactly. All right, we're getting ready to go down from here. Well, we're not getting ready to go down from here. Um, someone's getting ready to come up here. Um, we have Dr. Kim Lee. She is the live makeup tutorial person. She is a celebrity makeup artist. She's going to.